and dresses, and you can have a full basket, which is all these left going all the way to the front. But this is called a, same with dress, the half basket sled. So it's lighter for the dogs to pull. And then what this is here, this is called your sled bag. This is so you can carry your mandatory equipment and so if you have an injured dog. Some people can also go in the bag too. Yep, sometimes if people give rides. And then this is called your driving bow. Like Jessica's is flat lines, curved, and yep. then. This, I can't really see it that little bit. This is called the runner, and it's just pretty much plastic. And then, so it glides down the snow. You can kind of see these are the same. Oh, yours go all the way down. His go all the way down, too. He's got guards on him, so they don't get scratched. scratched. And then these, this black part is called the foot pad. And so you have grip so you don't fall off your sled. See, and that's another difference between his sled and my sled. I don't have big foot pads on my sled. So it's a lot easier to fall off of or slip. And then, <laughs> I need some of those. Black ice. Is that we go? Yeah. No, yeah. And there's, on my sled, I have two different types of brakes. This is called the bar brake. And I just push it on that, and it stops, at least the taps, to stop. It'll dig into the ground. Dig into the ground, yep. Do you have one of those? I have a small little brake on mine. A claw brake. This is just a claw brake. Because I usually don't, th those sleds are designed for many more dogs. Yeah. This usually works for stopping one or two. Yep. Usually. And then what this is is called your drag mat, which is also a type of brake. So when you're going down hills, you can step on it either like this or with your foot still on the runner, but on the mat, because when you're going down hills, you try to get your foot up to this break, two things could happen. Either you could hit a rut and stop, or you could lose your balance and flip the sled. So when you have, when you have your foot still on the runner and hitting the mat, you still slow down. I'm kind of just slowing the sled down so yep. you don't catch your dogs yep. and, and run your dogs you over. run the sled into the back of your dogs. <laughs> and then, has that ever happened to one of you? I don't think I've ever hit my dogs with nope. a sled. I flipped going down hills up. You flipped going down hills? <laughs> and then I got a drag mat. And when you're out on the trail, if you have to stop your team, for if you have a tangle or an injured dog, they have to put in the basket. There's two different ways you can stop them. This is called a snow hook. You put it on the ground, and then you stomp it into the snow. You need a lot of snow for it to stick, or else it will just come unloose, and you'll keep on going. And, but if you need it to stop for a long time, this most of the time wouldn't stay for the entire time. So there's also a, a rope that's connected to the front of your sled, where the game line is. like a tree or a post. And it's just got two little loops in it. Yep. And the antler is used as a quick release. And it's well, that's pretty good. And when you're ready to go, and it pulls that right out and it comes on them. Yep. What if it gets stuck on the tree? Um, the way it's made, it won't. It'll just go around. Go around the tree. And if it does get snagged, let it be stopped again. <laughs> <laughs> if the rope breaks and your hook um, is stuck and you're like pulling it with two hands and your dogs um, like went down a hill and you didn't really notice it as fast as they were going and you couldn't stop, then you're in trouble. Yes. <laughs> well, if the hook is stuck and that thing is broken, and yeah. the brakes aren't working that That's way. right. You always got to check your equipment check before your equipment. you go. Every single time. Check your lines. Check everything. Well, you Every time. Well, you could use one of those brakes on there. Yep. Yep, you no. could. Yep. And 
Remember what we said the three rules were? Don't, don't go, walk. don't go, don't, don't okay. go. And if you were going down the trail and you seemed like you were going to tip with my sled and probably with Jess's too, if you, you can get it up. And if you're about to tip, you just have to smack it back down. Because what I learned out the hard way is that if you go to tip, and you just try to press down, you're still going to flip. And that, that's definitely something you don't want to do. Yeah. This sled, no, his sled definitely has more give than mine, but yep. it's the same thing. If you're up on the side, you don't want to slowly put your foot on there, because a lot of times you don't even way. know that yeah. you're tipping over yeah. until you've you lost it. your balance. Because yep. you're going 20 miles an hour around yep. curves and stuff. And that's actually really fast. That's really that is fast. really fast. It's Especially probably faster in a small than area, mind. everything looks so small in front of you. Yeah. Yep. Kind, of kind of loose. And when you're going on a curve or a turn, you want to be able to get it up almost at one more when you're turning. So that you can make those nice sharp turns. Yep. Now we can show you how to hook up a dog to the gang line. Now like Dan had said earlier, is part of the training is to get the dogs to put on the, the harness. Not all dogs are the same. Some dogs are fine with it, some dogs don't really like it. Okay. Is that why you okay. put them in the harness when they're young so they get used to it? Exactly. Yep. Do you kind of just like keep them in the harness, like if they've got to go outside, you just kind of like attach the waist to it so that they're still, like, uh, so usually, that they're used to it? Usually it's, uh, it's kind of like exercising. You're going you're gonna to work and train at this pe period of time, and then when you're not training, you're not training. Not so you don't, sure you, you wouldn't leave it on the whole cooperate. time. So we can cooperate. And while they're harnessing the dog, okay. I'm going to talk about... The gang line. Perfect. Does she not like getting that on? Sometimes. If if I didn't have a hold of her leash, she, she would away. probably try to run away. Yeah, no way. Hmm? No way. She being a little bit more supportive now? Because she's yeah. surrounded by people? Whoa. Whoa. Hey, that dog's already done with it. Just yeah, it's yep, quick. she's already got her time. And it, hey. It's quick when you're used to it. Yep. And that just goes over her head and then under both of her arms. So there's a nice padding here for their chest. And it doesn't hurt them. Yep, exactly. The nice extra padding is, is good. And then that just gets nice and snug right here. For just this one, she has just the two dog sections for the two dog. Yep. So when I hook my two together on my sled, just drop it. You hook it right on here. Don't get the line tangled. So go that way. You can walk <laughs> What's the most dogs you've gone with? Just Me? Two? I've just been done with him. Me, I the most I've gone with is six. Now this What's year, two? see what happens when both of these dogs are hooked up? Look, she can go that way if she wants. She can go the other way if she doesn't want to, but if she, if she wanted to, she could. So and we'll get into some of the issues. Uh, that what more dogs have. What if there's a tree and they're connected right there and they and one goes that way, one goes that way? This is for kid on a neckline. Right, right, but what if it's what if so the thing comes right They stop the really quick. Oh, so that they um, now the they so, so now their heads are hooked together. together. So, so what if one wants to go this way and one wants to go that way? Now they can. The, the bigger one. The bigger dog gets to go where she wants to go. Yeah. Because they're going to pull her. Is a yes. three year old dog one long? Yep. Yes. Yep, she's the bigger one. She's a cute one. She's a cute one. I'm a dog. I have two. Ew, ew, ew. I don't know how, how do you, you feel know that's how they work? Your there. dog in there is her. her. I don't put my dog in there. That's her. I don't have a bag. I don't go as far as Dan so. If I had to carry, I only go a mile or two. I'd have, I'd have to carry my dog. But I have to leave the sled to carry the dog. If you have more than one dog, you have to step on the line before you step over. Yes. Always step on the line before you step over. You should actually never cross the line. Yeah. Hey, 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 pay attention. 
And if you notice, for Jess's king line, she has this bungee or that, so when the dogs are pulling, they're going to have a little bit of gear and... Smooths the ride right out for the, for the musher. Yep. And Not so jerky when yep. they take off. When you have a small team like this, you have your leaders up front. And when you get into a... Now we can probably say these girls back off, eh? Yeah. your stronger dogs up front, they would be dragging your Everybody rear else. dogs. <laughs> they, they would have the line tight all the time. This way, if you put your, your strong dogs in the back, they're doing most of the pulling, and then your other dogs can get the speed and get them pullers going fast. The commands to get your dog to start running is hike or let's go. Yep. And that's what the musher on the sled says. They say either hike or let's go. That gets the dogs moving. When you come up to like a trail where you have to turn right, you say G. If you want to go left, you say Ha. And if you're racing and you come up to another team to let that other team know that you're going to pass, you say Trail. And if you want to pass that team, you say to your dogs On By. And that tells them to keep going straight. And that pretty much goes, the On By command pretty much goes for anything. Yep. Any distraction. If the dogs so suddenly start looking at a squirrel that's running that way, you just keep on telling them, I'm by, I'm by, I'm by, and they're going to see Shelby's ears instantly <laughs> look at me. She's like, I know that word. <laughs> and you just tell them I'm by, and you want to break their focus from whatever they're being distracted by and keep them focused, and you just tell them I'm by, and hopefully they keep going. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully. It takes a lot of training to get a dog to know G and Ma and I'm by. How long does it take the person to get trained? <laughs> well, yeah. Probably There's just as long. In a race where I have accidentally said the wrong command, but thankfully the dogs knew the trail and they took the right trail. Well, it can wow. happen. Yes. So how do you decide which dog goes and which 
position. Just you it just kind of learn. Strength it has to go with training. Strength. As you're training your dog, you kind of learn your dog. Like Shiloh is older. She doesn't really like to pull. She likes to run, but she doesn't like to pull. When my dogs run next to each other, Shelby pretty much does all the pulling. I mean, she's her line Shiloh, is tight. <laughs> she, Shiloh doesn't run far fast, so right. she would make a good point dog, which yes. is right behind the leader. She she needs that extra little bit of somebody else pulling her to keep her going. <laughs> yeah. She's smart enough to be the lead dog, but I think she would get past. <laughs> yeah, she'd get run over. Where Shelby, when I started work, see. when I started working with Shelby, Shelby, some dogs just take to it. They know they don't run off the trail. They, for some reason, she's when she's going, she's in run mode, and she doesn't run off the trail. She doesn't run into things. So I got really lucky. With her. She didn't need a and She's a bigger, things. stronger dog, so she would be the wheel dog. She would be in the back doing most of the pulling. And yet she's still small for some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you said it takes one person per dog when you're doing races. I yes. not how strong the dog is. So you have to have a team of people. Yeah. Well, you have to. When, when you're at the race and your dogs are all strung out on a line, a they'll, they'll put a hook and two things and then various hooks in the center, and that's what they'll chain their dogs up to. You end well, up when you go from that point to the sled, that's when it's hard because you've got a free sled and you're hooking dogs to it. So somebody's got to stay on the sled to stop it and make sure it doesn't go anywhere. While other persons have to hold the dogs, and a lot so that of they times don't get all too, you know, when the dogs get really excited, like I don't, I don't know if I can get Shelby that excited, but Shelby, can you hike? Come on, Shelby, hike, hike, hike. A lot of times, you're walking your dogs just like, like this. Yeah. I mean, it's not two wheel net, and they're hopping <laughs> the whole way because they're pulling you, and sometimes they want to go. They yeah. want to go real yep. bad, right? Two wheel in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll get her over here. Okay. And we have an activity to show you guys what it's like to be the dogs. So I'm going to first explain what's going to happen. We're going to have one person on the sled. They're going to be the musher. And then... One of you guys. Yep. And then we're going to have six kids in the line. And what the dogs are going to do is they're going to be standing and holding onto the line. So I have two here to make six a team. And then the kids that are left, we're going to have you stand in a line along here and start clapping, as is what the spectators do at the beginning of the race. And the musher is going to say hike, and then the dogs are going to just walk in place. Okay, so we need two people that think they know the three commands. The hike to go, and then G for right, right and then ha for left. So we need two people that think they can remember them three commands. I'm thinking of Emily and, yeah, you too. Okay. I'm get some pictures of the dog. All right, ladies, stand up. We're going to clap and make all kinds of noise. Ready? All right, start clapping.
So you hear a lot of background noise and cars going by and stuff like that, but we just had to vlog outside again today. So I got a question from Blue Wolf on Twitter today, and he wanted to know